The Last Supper, this is a very special painting a masterpiece, in fact, and its creator is one of the most famous and enigmatic artists in history. The scene depicted by the artwork is also one of the most powerful ever depicted, not least because it is central to the history of Christianity. But could Leonardo da Vinci's painting be even more than that? Well, according to some, this famous mural could hide secret messages. A close look at Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper shows it's full of secrets. As one of the most famous and discussed works of Western art, The Last Supper should have no secrets left. After all, countless experts have studied painting over the centuries. Yet while she has earned her place in history, many myths and legends exist about her. So what does the painting itself reveal? At the center of the work, of course, is Jesus Christ the Son of God according to the Christian religion. And Christ is surrounded in the Last Supper by his twelve apostles. As the Bible says, these were the twelve men who most closely followed Jesus's teachings and spread his message after his crucifixion. And for Christians and art lovers everywhere, there is something truly powerful about the scene depicted in the painting. It is usually agreed that the work depicts the Last Supper of Jesus and the Apostles before the ultimate betrayal of Judas and the subsequent crucifixion of Christ. This event, as stated in the four canonical Gospels, constitutes one of the most powerful foundations of Christian tradition and rite. The Eucharist, or Holy Communion. But that's apparently not what Da Vinci the famous painter of the masterpiece wanted to focus on, although that symbolism certainly exists in the painting. Instead, the Last Supper seemingly captures the moment when Jesus informs his closest disciples that one of them will betray him shortly. And the emotion that perhaps best sums up the expressions of those in the painting aside from Jesus himself, of course is dismay. Indeed, the body language of the apostles as they listen to Christ's revelation suggests that this is perhaps the most overt message described in the Last Supper. But some were undoubtedly more captivated by what the painting did not reveal, rather than by what it showed. Some people believe that the messages contained in the masterpiece go beyond usual interpretations, and that these secrets in turn say profound things about the story as recorded in the Bible. So it's no surprise that some of these theories are rather controversial. Let's start with what we know about the Last Supper. To begin with, work on the future masterpiece began around 1495, when Leonardo's reputation was already established. He was born in Tuscany in April 1452 and was later educated in Florence by an artist named Andrea del Verrocchio. And as history tells us, he became perhaps the greatest example of a polymath or renaissance man the world has ever seen. Indeed, Leonardo is not only considered one of the greatest painters in history, but he was also an inventor, a mathematician, a sculptor and an astronomer, to name just a few of his many achievements. Among the inventions credited to Leonardo are, for example, the first known designs for a flying machine. When it came to Leonardo's paintings, many had a religious bent. Perhaps the first of his works to gain widespread acclaim was the Baptism of Christ, designed in collaboration with Verrocchio. Other Christian-themed works followed before Leonardo was invited to create a mural for the Santa Maria del Grazi convent in Milan, which would become the Last Supper. To this day, the painting is still in the refectory. And it was certainly not uncommon to depict the Last Supper of Christ and his disciples in works of art at the time. Pietro Perugino's rendition which had only been painted a few years earlier, in 1490, even shares similarities with Leonardo's masterpiece, although Perugino puts the traitor, Judas, seated on the other side of the table in relation to the rest of the apostles. However, other works from the period shared the placement of Leonardo's guests. Additionally, Leonardo's painting was based on events recounted in the Gospel of John. According to the Gospel, a few days after Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem, an important meal was shared by the 13 central characters of the story. And during this Last Supper or Last Supper, several important events are said to have occurred. First, Jesus apparently predicted that one of his apostles would betray him to the people who would later come to arrest him. This is the scene that Leonardo depicts in The Last Supper, and the apostles react with dismay to the news that someone at the table will be disloyal to their Lord. The second important event that would have taken place during the meal is the Eucharist. 
This is the Christian rite of partaking of bread and wine as a representation of the body and blood of Christ. It is a ritual that forms the basis of Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper, which is a sacrament still practiced by most Christian denominations. Third, the Gospel of John states that Jesus had yet another revelation in store. He announced that the disciple Peter would deny having known him three times before dawn broke. And, naturally, this news apparently once again caused consternation among the apostles. However, it is the prediction of betrayal that concerns Leonardo in his interpretation of the scene as set out in the Last Supper. Since this scene plays such an important role in the Christian religion, it is not surprising that Leonardo's painting is far from the first to depict the event. But unlike other depictions of the Last Supper, it has become the center of debate, conspiracy theories, myths, legends and riddles. So, does the master's work really contain secret messages? Well, many believe so, and there is one theory in particular that has really gained prominence lately. Indeed, Leonardo was known for painting male figures who could be considered androgynous, notably in his works Bacchus and St. John the Baptist. And according to some, this is also the case in The Last Supper. Most notably, there is a fairly androgynous figure located to the left of Jesus as you look at the painting. And while most art historians and scholars claim this figure is the disciple John, the gender of the person can easily be questioned due to the length of the subject's hair and effeminate features. As a result, some claim that this character is actually a woman. And if that's true, then his identity becomes a source of even greater controversy. One of the most popular theories was actually used as the central theme of Dan Brown's incredibly popular 2003 novel, The Da Vinci Code. As the title of the novel suggests, its premise is that the great polymath and artist planted hidden messages in his works of art. And Brown's book claims that these symbols apparently allude to the fact that Jesus was actually married to Mary Magdalene. It is said, for example, that there is a letter M in the center of the painting which apparently represents both Madeline and the idea of marriage. And Mary Magdalene is undeniably a key figure in Christian scripture. This close disciple of Jesus was believed to have been present at his crucifixion, and she would also have been among the first to witness his resurrection. As such, she became the apostle of apostles for many believers. So, could Mary Magdalene have been the wife of Jesus? Well, most historians and religious scholars reject such a notion out of hand because there is no solid evidence to suggest that this was the case. In fact, the theories covered in Dan Brown's novel were just rehashes of earlier ideas based on the same premise. There is, however, no doubt that Leonardo was a master of ambiguity, and his most famous painting has, more than any other, given rise to the most diverse interpretations. The Mona Lisa, sometimes also known as the Mona Lisa, depicts a woman with an enigmatic smirk that has intrigued visitors for centuries. The work is a particularly good example of Leonardo's famous use of the sfumato technique, which can be translated as blur dot, it is a shadow effect that could perhaps apply as much to the meaning of Leonardo's work as to the artistic style itself. However, one Leonardo expert, Mario Tade, also rejects the theory as stated in Dan Brown's novel. And at the heart of Tade's position is the fact that Leonardo's painting cannot be understood without taking into account other works of the period, since he was far from the first artist to interpret the scene depicted in the Gospels. Before Leonardo da Vinci, there had been hundreds of Last Supper, and when he painted the Last Supper, he had to follow certain rules Tade told the Smithsonian in July 2016. Those rules require people to be in that position and with this smile, so that people can recognize the apostles individually. Thus, Tade rejects the theory stated in the Da Vinci Code. Is it Jean or Marie Madeleine? He pretends to ask. It's a very easy question, but it's a stupid question, because it must be John, because Leonardo must have copied the Last Supper before him, and John looks like a woman. But that doesn't mean Tade rejects the idea of a hidden message in artwork far from it, in fact. Instead, he thinks Leonardo was trying to make a less overt statement in his painting a statement based on the use of halos. Indeed, at the time The Last Supper was painted, it was normal to include halos around all depictions of Jesus and his apostles, all except Judas. 
These characteristics were naturally intended to imply that these people were divine, or at least holy. And as the Last Supper was painted at a time of great devotion, it is somewhat surprising to see Leonardo break with the tradition of the time and not include halos in his work. Thus, Tade believes that the omission of the halos was in fact Leonardo's real message, and this decision was itself potentially controversial. I think Leonardo never wore the halos because he thinks these people are ordinary people. And that's Leonardo's real secret Tade explained. There are no extraterrestrial or supernatural objects in the Last Supper. Leonardo wants to tell us that these 13 men are simple men and that is something much more powerful. Even discounting the Mary Magdalene theory, it seems there could still be other hidden messages in the Last Supper. One theory relates, for example, to the numbering system used in the groupings of guests in the painting chosen by Da Vinci. Two groups of three apostles are placed on either side of Jesus, meaning the placement can be interpreted as corresponding to the numbers 33133. Additionally, if Tade's interpretation of the painting is accurate, then Leonardo was apparently presenting himself as a religious skeptic, which would have been extremely controversial at the time. Undoubtedly, the artist was a man of science, which could conflict with religious theory. Furthermore, if as is assumed Leonardo was homosexual, the beliefs of the time prohibited him from entering paradise. But what is the relationship between these facts and the sequence 33133? Well, according to one theory, the answer is found in Lamentations 3313 the chapter and verse numbers of which perfectly match the numerical ratio of the people depicted in the painting. And this particular Old Testament passage begins like this. For no one is rejected by the Lord forever. Does this mean that Leonardo predicted his own salvation? Whatever your opinion on this particular theory, however, it is arguably not the darkest secret apparently hidden within the famous painting. Nor is the myth that the human models used for Jesus and Judas were one and the same person, although this particular hypothesis makes for a fascinating allegory of sin. One version of this story claims that Leonardo had identified a young man who possessed all the facial characteristics the painter was looking for to depict Jesus. Then years later, as the story goes, the Last Supper was almost finished, but Judas's face was missing. So, looking for a subject sinister enough to serve as a model, Leonardo supposedly went to a local prison and found a prisoner. And it was only after completing the painting that the artist discovered that the models of Jesus and Judas were in fact one and the same man or at least that's what legend says. Unfortunately, this story is too full of inconsistencies to be accurate. To begin with, the timeline does not stand up to scrutiny, as the painting would have been completed in four or five years at most. But there's yet another theory regarding the Last Supper, and it's one that seemingly contradicts suggestions that Leonardo was somehow a non-believer. Specifically, it is claimed that the great master included musical notes in the image. And, at first glance, this is not completely implausible, after all, Leonardo was also a musician and instrument maker. This other theory piqued the curiosity of Giovanni Maria Paula, and he therefore began to examine the possibility that there was a musical composition hidden in the work. Paula even found something intriguing after transposing musical staff lines to the Last Supper and using particular religious symbols such as bread and hands to identify the notes. But the composition only really took on meaning when the Italian realized that the score had to be read according to Leonardo's distinctive writing method, from right to left. The result is a 40-second piece of music that Paula described as a hymn to God. He also suggests that the pipe organ used ubiquitously in Leonardo's time for religious music gives the best effect to the composition. And Paula even recorded the melody he performed from The Last Supper and detailed the process in his book La Musica Salata, which translates to the hidden music. Dot. Furthermore, Paula believes that his findings reveal a version of Leonardo quite different from those put forward by some of the other theories relating to the Last Supper. A new figure is emerging. Da Vinci was not a heretic as some believe. What emerges is a man who believes a man who truly believes in God, Paula told the Associated Press in November 2007. However, whatever the truth, perhaps the true genius of the Last Supper lies in the way it still captivates visitors after all this time.
And thanks to its beautifully crafted figures, expert use of perspective, and clever inclusion of apparent symbolism, this masterpiece still possesses the ability to spark endless debate. Thank you for watching, please don't forget to like and subscribe.